Hey Stampers, another video tutorial. This is the third one for May Stamp Club, our, our club of gifting, I guess. Um, our club of five awesome projects for wrapping and embellishing and gifting a uh, celebration gift or just because gift, either way. And this little guy is a square, mini square box. And I found this on Pinterest and it linked me to a tutorial and I will put that link on the blog post so it won't be on the YouTube channel it'll be on the blog post that goes with it so that I can give all of the the links on where I found it I've got the video I'll have the pictures on there but it'll give you the original link as well so it's a mini square mini box square mini pinch top square mini pinch top box who say that three times fast okay we are using the lullaby DSP pack um, using all of the DSP that was retiring so the ladies got to see all kinds of different patterns and what we are going to do we have a piece that is seven and three quarters by four and five eighths okay so seven and three quarters by four and five eighths so once I cut my seven and three quarter measurement I was able to get two out of a sheet of DSP and I still had a decent sized piece left over for scrap for cards for anything else that I may do so you can get two of these out of a 12 by 12 um, yeah pretty darn cool so here's my piece we're gonna do all kinds of scoring so the first thing we're gonna do is along the long side we're going to score at one and a half, at three and one eighths. You can see the they're all the same size. Four and five eighths. So again, we've got equal pieces, and then six and a quarter. So one and a half, three and one eighths, four and five eighths, and six and a quarter. That's on the long side, the seven and three quarter side. You're going to flip that and you're going to score at one and a half and at three and one eighths again. So once you've got that done, I don't know if you can see that on here, it's all squares. They're all even. Hence the name. <laughs> mini square mini pinch top box. Okay. Now what I prefer to do, and you may not be this way, and just because I'm doing it in the video doesn't mean you have to. If you know that you do this differently, go for it. I prefer to, to fold all of my score lines first. I find, especially when I'm working with DSP, that I find that it helps me um, see my score lines better when I'm going to cut, when I'm going to trim. So that's just my personal preference. If you're not that way, then by all means, do it however you feel is best. I find with some of the DSP, it is very patterned. It's very busy, uh, and it's very difficult to see the score lines, to, to go straight. As I say this, I notice that this guy's a little crooked. There we go. Okay, so there you should be able to see that a little better that we've got even squares everywhere on this page. Okay, so now we're going to need our paper snips. And on one of the short ends, you're going to remove the squares on the side, this side and this side. So these are going to come completely out. And then everywhere else, we're going to do slits. So once you've got those two squares gone, this is a short end, you're going to go to the second short end and you're going to cut slits right up to that first score line. Sometimes what I like to do is a little sliver. So to go on either side of the score line, and then take that little sliver right out. If you find your scoring projects and they're not lining up, um, there's little lips everywhere that you end up having to snip off. When you go to cut these score lines, what you might need to do is cut, can you see that? Cut on either side of the score line. Not that they're thick, but they can make a little bit of a difference. So we've got our score lines here. Now, along the long sides, you've already cut here. So ignore this guy. Ignore this first line. And what you want are slits up this side twice. Okay, so leave that first one, go second and third. You're going to turn this around and then you're going to do the same slits on this side. Okay, 
And again, don't cut this guy because you've just cut this guy on the end. Okay, that piece will just come right off. And we don't want that. So that is all my garbage. And I've got a couple of them here that are all set and ready to go. Um, so what we're going to do next is we're going to adhere it. And again, I'm using snail in the video. Um, if you're going to be gifting this, you're probably going to want to use sticky strip or Tombow or Fuse, something that's going to hold uh, a bit more firmly because if you put, not that this is a big box for anything very heavy, but you don't want it falling apart on someone. Um, so yeah, so that's what we're going to do is we're going to adhere it. When I look at this guy, I think of this as the middle. Okay, you've got the ends here, the flaps, and then the ends here. So let's call these our middle squares, okay? So on these middle ones, this is my pattern that's gonna show on the outside. I want to put adhesive on the outside right here, okay? And again, I'm just using snail in the video because it's a little quicker. Okay, so I've got my adhesive here. The end with your missing squares is going to be the end that folds up first. So we're going to take this flap where I've put my adhesive and we're going to take this side, you see that, this side here up to meet it. If you're using Tombow, then you'll have a little bit of wiggle room. If you don't get the lines perfectly, you'll have a second to adjust it. If you're using Fuse or Sticky Strip, it is not going to be forgiving. So think of that too when you're choosing your adhesive to use on your box. They're all great adhesives, but sometimes you want that forgiveness and uh, you need to choose the adhesive that's going to help you with that. Okay, so we've got half of our box done. Now what we want to do well, there's two ways that you can do it. It depends on uh, the look you're going for. Some ladies fold it, were folding theirs at club, and um, what they found was that the seams were off. So just de it just depends. It depends. Sometimes you'll have a big gap here, and sometimes you, you won't. If you're doing this out of cardstock, it's not a big deal, because what you can do is you can cut pieces of DSP and put it on top and cover everything up. If you're doing these boxes out of DSP, you're going to want to fold just to see, okay, does it look better if I put these in the front or does it look better if I put these behind? See, I don't like the way it looks behind. I don't know if you can see this because I can see this little lip here and I can see this little lip here. So what I'm going to want to do is take that into the front. So I hope that makes sense that you can fiddle with, with your last piece and just see which way it looks best. So far, I've found that this is the, the better way doing the, the second piece on the outside completely up to you and it's not going to matter. So what we're going to do is if I'm going to put this on the outside, I want my adhesive on my inside pattern so I want it on that yellow. And I'm simply going to fold this up and attach. Fold up and attach. lined up. And I know that'll bug me, so I gotta fix it. <laughs> okay. And now when you fold these guys in, it's not much of a difference, but you'll notice that some of them, there's one that's shorter, and there's one that's longer. You see that? Shorter, longer. I want the short ones in. Okay, so we're gonna fold this over. So you put your little earrings, your little ring, your little fill in the blank. And then you fold this up and you're going to take these two and you're going to pinch them like this. Okay. And what we're going to do, I've got the crocodile. I've had it for years. I don't have the handheld punches from Stampin' Up! yet. They're on my wish list. Um, if you can find a crocodile, they're wonderful tools. If not, one of the, the hole punches from Stampin' Up! would be perfect. One of the handheld punches. I'm using the smaller hole on this one. I'm just pinching this together push my DSP in all the way and we've got a little bit of a hole and see that's how small the hole is just for some baker's twine or some thin ribbon it's a small box I don't want a big gaping hole on the top of it um, so I would probably ch I would choose a baker's twine for this guy but even if you choose one of the thin ribbons it would still look lovely and you don't need that big of a hole I've got a piece of the of baker's twine here some of my scrap some of the gold I'm gonna put that through and these are where your floss threaders can come in really handy, the dental floss threaders that you can get at the dollar store or at a grocery store in the in the pharmacy section or at a pharmacy. You can get a pack of, gosh, 50 I think it is, for a couple bucks, depending on the brand and the store that you're shopping at, um, and put any kind of a ribbon through your floss 
threader and any buttons you're threading, any packages you're threading that have those finicky little holes, it helps tremendously. It will save you so much grief. I've tried to do a little bit of a bow there and that looks yucky. So what I'm going to do is go ta-da! <laughs> And I'm going to show you the one I already did. So you get the baker's twine in there, a little bit of a bow that looks kind of sort of better than the other one. But you've got the pinch top. How cool is that? And the flaps, the shorter flaps that are in there, even though there's no adhesive, they're not, these guys are folded over. They're not coming out. So whatever you've put in there, unless it's a rock, <laughs> is not going to come out, which is awesome. So that is the third project that we did at Stamp Club mini square pinch top box from Pinterest and I'll have all the links like I said in the blog post that I do. Very cool. Happy stamping. Enjoy.